So when you um, when you're doing blast, so here we have a query, and here we have a database, which we're thinking of just as a very very long string. Okay, and um, we have a place, if we, if we put the query here, we get a particular score for that alignment. If we put the query there, a particular score for that alignment. If we put uh, there, we have a score for that alignment. And in the end, what BLAST really reports is the best score if it's high enough. I told you the mechanics that BLAST uses, and of course this is part of your toy BLAST program, for finding that this is a good place to put the query string in the database. And I told you the mechanics for how uh, it's going to score uh, that particular position or placement. It comes back with a score S. And I told you that the E value although last uses something called normalized scores. It doesn't matter. We can just think of it as an alignment score. An E value is the expected number of times that with this query sequence on a randomized database in the same composition, BLAST would have returned a, uh, a hit with score S or better. Okay? So where does... Where do these E values come from? What's the, uh, what is the formula for that? Or at least what is the thinking that uh, goes into that? And I'm not going to tell you because it would just be a formula. But I do want to point out this, that the whole issue of uh, best scores or the probability of the best score above some threshold, some hashes, or the ex or the expected value, expected sorry, expected number of hits above S. That has to do with the maximum of random variables, okay? So this is, comes from thinking about the best thing, the max of a set of random variables. Which random variables are we talking about? We're talking about, uh, on, the, on the assumption that this database is random, we're saying, what would be the alignment? What's the, uh, when you, you place your, your query down here, you get an alignment value. You get some score, S. And then you get another score here, and you get another score here. So if you have all of these different scores, what you're reporting is the best score, so that's the max. So each one of these things, each one of these scores is a random variable. And what's being reported is the, or derived, or thought about, is the max of a set of random variables. Okay? So my next question is this. How is the max of n and we'll say independent random variables distributed. Okay, so uh, again. I have, I'll just take this very abstractly. I have some probability distribution. And I sample independently 
a billion times, a million times. Okay? And I report, and each time I sample, I get back a number, a score S. And now I, I want to report the best over all of those. Okay? What does that distribution look like? Well, let me ask sort of the flip question, flip side question. What doesn't it look like? All right. <laughs> All right, let me, to get to that, what, what if I asked about the sum instead of the max? What about the sum of indep an independent random variables? What does anybody know about this one? Zero? <laughs> well, no, I didn't say that it was the mean was zero. I mean, uh, just generally. If you ever took a statistics course, this is what you spent most of your time dealing with. Right? You guys are statisticians. Yeah, I know. OK, so you're being too technical. Just generally speaking. When you talk about the sum of random variables, independent random variables, what does that lead you to? Are you asking about the distribution of sum? Yeah, right. <coughs> Different distributions, yeah, but we're biologists here. There's a simple answer. What? Who said that? Normal distribution, right. OK. Yeah, I know. There's all kinds of little technicalities. And if you're a professional statistician, you worry about those little things. But the big picture, the, the bottom line is that when you talk about the sums of, of random variables, it, you get to the normal distribution, basically. Okay? And the normal distribution looks like this, sort of. This is supposed to be symmetric. Okay. And now I'm just bringing this up. Because when we talk about the max, the max does not look like that. OK? And this is the big mistake that most people make in thinking about statistics of matching is to somehow, whether they do it explicitly, which is sometimes people do, or implicitly, they somehow think that the max should be distributed like the normal distribution. OK? And in, and in reality, the max does not look like the normal. The, le, the max actually has a very long tail in the right here. And it's something called the extreme value distribution. Or this is actually a density, but or it's also called the gumball. Anyway, something like that. But the thing I want, to, I want everybody to remember five years from now is that is a very long tail, a long leg right tail. And what's, what's the take home lesson from that? If you see something that looks like a very nice max relative to the mean, okay, it looks like it's a couple of standard deviations away. I'm, I'm normal, thinking of it as normal. If, it was, if you thought it was a normal distribution and you're a couple standard deviations away from the mean of the normal, you might think that's really a big deal. You might think that's you found something important. You found something that was very different than random. Okay? You're taking the max, you're taking the best score from that database, and you're saying, this is a big score. This is a big S. But a lot of the times you'd be wrong because the true distribution of the max has a very long tail out here. It's not that unusual to have values that are very far away from the mean. And that's the take home lesson. Uh, next time I'll illustrate how a very famous geneticist made just this error uh, in confusing these different distributions. <coughs>